kai in i quak peu in tla to kayo chichi meka se tlakat si wat i toka its papalot ki no not ki milwi an ki tla liske in amotla to kau ye wat in wakli om pa si wian in ne kwa be yo kan. Eats Papalot, the butterfly of obsidian knives, is an enigmatic figure in Aztec mythology. She flutters in and out of the tales of old as a clearly major player in the history of the Mexica and other Aztec nations. Yet practically nothing has survived of how she was actually worshipped, aside from mythical references and ritual speech. Once a terrible goddess of the ancient Chichimec, her memory stayed in ritual allegory, kept through the centuries in the original Nahuatl, as well as a mysterious bundle. This video will explore Eats Papalot through three mythical episodes, the Broken Tree of Paradise, the ancestral homeland of the Chichimeca, the perpetual presence in mineral. It will then conclude with an exploration of her role in the sacred calendar, as well as a dedication for her calendar day. Indeed, her mythology was as much about the lands themselves as her actions upon them, and we see this connection in the tale of the Broken Tree. The first episode in the tales of Eats Papalot located her in Tamowanchan, the legendary paradise where the creator pair made the first man and woman. It was a place of tropical mist, and at its heart stood a sacred tree, often depicted in multiple colors. As the ancient goddess was picking its flowers, she broke this tree, whose red sap spurted like the blood of a sacrifice. The fall of the tree brought the fall of paradise, and from it came the hardships we nowadays endure to survive upon the earth. If the Mexica had anything like a concept of restoring the conditions of paradise, it was the belief that social harmony could produce natural clemency. Mexica religion spoke of cosmic equilibrium rather than personal redemption. The obsidian butterfly by the broken tree was amply remembered in picture-based codices such as the Borgia and the Teleriano Romensis, telling that it was among the most familiar accounts of her. Enraged with the destruction of their tropical paradise, the creator pair cast Eats Papalot out from it, and for the rest of her life she would walk among the deserts upon the earth's surface. The Chichimeca was the savage northern wilderness beyond Mesoamerica's civilized domain. It was in this untamed desert homeland that the seven founder Nahua nations, collectively called Azteca, emerged from a mythical cave as if being birthed from the earth's womb. Many of the earliest episodes in the Nahuatl histories took place while the founder nations were still nomadic Chichimex, wandering the frontier before settling into the basin of Mexico. And it was here in the Chichimec desert that Obsidian Butterfly embodied its primal power. She was a sorceress, a human horned owl, a being of terrible otherworldly magic. Eventually she died by sacrifice, but she would remain a presence in the memories of the ancestral Nahua. They cremated her body, its remnants becoming flint and ash, which they inserted into a bundle that they would keep as Teot, her sacred presence, in the account's own words. Long after the Mexica entered the valley of Tetzcoco, they remembered Eats Papalot as a desert dweller. In the prayer song to Te Teo Inan in the Florentine Codex, the Mexica likened her to a wild butterfly on a barrel cactus, as well as an alias of the earth lady Tlaltecutli. Through these sacred similitudes, the Mexica envisioned Eats Papalot as both the grounds of the ancestral desert and the creatures that still abide upon it. Starting with the root for obsidian, the very name Eats Papalot alluded to her mineral aspect, whose veins reached to artistic representation and religious pursuit. Paintings and carvings alike highlighted flint or obsidian blades adorning her butterfly wings like razor pinions. Sharp stones were such a part of her identity that even a Nahuatl hunting spell likened an arrowhead to her upon mounting it upon its shaft. The metaphoric naming of Eats Papalot in this ritual language recalled her presence among the hunters and gatherers of the Aztec's Chichimec ancestors. Aztec rituals evoking obsidian butterfly aimed at her not only becoming mineral but also producing it, for she was additionally a patron of miners for the Mexica, according to the Florentine Codex. The earthen matrix alone was not her only habitation, for she rode the currents of both ample mother loads and mystical time. A fixed sequence of divine powers along precise intervals defined Mesoamerica's sacred calendars, and obsidian butterfly thus appeared in the central Mexican versions. She presided over the day sign of Vulture, an elderly bird fitting for one of the oldest goddesses. Here we also consider the royal associations that the Maya held for the Vulture. She was additionally present during the 13 days from one house to 13 eagle, because this period's first day, one house, pointed west, it started with the arrival of a Siwa Teot, the wrathful spirit of a birthing woman, who then helped carry the sun from the celestial zenith to the underworld portal on its daily course. 
Although Eats Papalot had resigned from her mythical stature, her role in Aztec ritual harkens to earlier barbarian life, from the first couple in a tropical paradise to the Chichimec lords of the northern wild. Yet she had never left her people, for her presence was fossilized into mineral remains, such as her ritual bundle, stone arrowheads, and abundant mines. A creature of obsidian blades and butterfly wings, she sits silently upon her cactus to await her worship from those seeking to harness her earthen gifts. And speaking from experience, I once had a personal communication with Itz Papalot, the obsidian butterfly, and I won't go into too many details because this was a very private interaction, but I will say that the overall message that I wanted to share with you was, be real. I published this video on March 29, 2024. The Alfonso Caso correspondence marks the sacred calendar date of 12 Vulture, on which I dedicate this episode to the obsidian butterfly. Please like, share, and subscribe to the Eye of the Serpent channel. Your support goes toward travel, research, and production. Thank you for watching, and good roads.